Enabling Windows Subsystem for Linux, also known as WSL, is as simple as running a command in PowerShell. I'll search for PowerShell in Cortana and run it as the administrator by right-clicking and selecting Run as Administrator. With PowerShell open, we can go ahead and enter the command to enable WSL. You can copy the command from the video description, and I've put the command in a file on my desktop to make it easier for me in this tutorial. I'll open the file, copy the command, and then paste it into PowerShell by right-clicking. I'll hit enter to execute the command and wait for Windows to enable WSL. Once it completes, Windows will ask you to restart to complete the installation. Go ahead and hit enter to restart. To actually use WSL, we need to install a Linux distribution. For this tutorial, we'll install Ubuntu 18.04, which is a very popular Linux distribution that is used in most online tutorials. To install Ubuntu, launch the Microsoft Store from the taskbar and then search for Ubuntu at the top of the store. Click Ubuntu 18.04 in the search results and then click Get to start the installation. After the installation completes in the Microsoft Store, we can initialize Ubuntu by clicking Launch. This will finalize some installation items and then ask you to set your Unix username and password. I'll set my username to Percy and then enter and confirm my password. The installation is complete, and we now have a full Linux command line just like we were running Ubuntu. Let's see how you can access your Windows files from the Ubuntu command line. In WSL, your C drive is available at forward slash mnt forward slash c. You can change to your desktop directory by running cd forward slash mnt forward slash c forward slash users, then your username, forward slash desktop. If I run ls, I can see all the files on my desktop and I can run the cat command to print out the contents of the WSL command file. I can also create a new text file by running vim test file. Vim is a widely used command line text editor in Linux. I can enter text into the file by first pressing I to enter insert mode and then entering my text, hello world. To quit and save the file, I'll press escape to get out of insert mode and then type colon wq. The colon tells Vim to execute a command, the W means write the file, and Q means quit. If I minimize all the windows, I can see the file I created sitting on my desktop, and if I open it, I'll see the same content I entered with Vim. There are multiple ways to access your Ubuntu command line at a later time. First, you can pin Ubuntu to the start menu or taskbar from the Microsoft Store. You can pin Ubuntu to the start menu and launch it from there, or you can pin Ubuntu to the taskbar for even quicker access. Another way to launch your Ubuntu command line is by running bash.exe. Type bash into Cortana and then launch the bash program. This is the same command line as if you run Ubuntu from the start menu or taskbar, but the starting directory is the system32 directory instead of your Linux home directory. You can switch to your Linux home directory by running cd tilde. Now, if I run pwd, you'll see that I'm in forward slash home forward slash percy instead of the system32 directory. Thanks for watching everyone, I really hope you found that tutorial useful. If you have any questions at all, hit me up in the comments and I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe to this channel to see more content like this. Thanks again and see you next time.